Hello. In an earlier video, I showed how you could use an LCD display with a microbit, and I coded that using MakeCode version of Python. In this video, I'm going to do the same, but show how we can use this with a Raspberry Pi Pico and using the standard MicroPython designed for the Raspberry Pi Pico. This whole thing is actually very simple. It's a very simple circuit and the coding is quite straightforward. So it's quite useful for beginners that wanting to create something a bit interactive with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to show how you wire this up, how to get the software library, how to program the Pico, and then we're going to create a stopwatch program. There's a couple of things to watch out for, particularly with the Pico and the buttons I'm going to be using. And I'll explain that later on in the video, so make sure you keep watching to see that. I'm going to start by taking a look at the diagram and, and we can have a look at what the display is. This is in Fritzin. Fritzin is really good for designing breadboard layouts, which is what I've done here. So it's a, a full size breadboard to give us plenty of space. And I'm going to start by talking about this LCD display. So these are quite a common LCD display. Um, they have multiple pins which are actually on the PCB with the display. And that takes parallel data to put a message on the screen. And this one is a typical configuration of 16 by 2, sometimes known as a 1602 LCD display. So you can have up to 16 characters, letters, numbers, and there's some special characters as well that you can provide. If you're going to use that directly, then as you can see, there's quite a lot of pins. You don't necessarily need to use them all, but it does take up quite a few pins on the Pico. Instead of doing that directly, we're going to use a backpack on the LCD display. You can buy these pre-soldered onto the LCD display or you can get them separately. And this basically uses a, a chip on the backpack which takes a serial data using I squared C and converts that into the parallel data that the LCD display uses. And that way we only need these two data connections plus the power supply. This uses I squared C. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the I squared C protocol. I've covered that in another video and there'll be links in the description and the accompanying web page for this. Essentially it's a serial protocol and it uses two pins, uh, SDA, serial data, and SCL, serial clock. And obviously you press the data via the, the data and the clock is used to ensure the timing of the data being transmitted to the display. And this is a bus protocol um, in that it allows you to connect multiple devices, which you distinguish by using the address of the device. We don't need to go into any more detail for this particular circuit, but it's something that you might want to look at. If you wanted to add multiple devices, you can start to stream multiple I squared C devices on the same ports, which is uh, really useful. In terms of wiring, we've taken the ground pin to any of the ground pins on the Pico, and the VCC is the power supply for the LC display. That has to be a five volt supply. I've connected that to the first pin on the Pico. This is the VBUS pin, as you can see here. And if you're connecting the Pico via the micro USB and use the USB as the power supply, then this will be at the five volts that you use for the USB power supply. So that's quite useful. You just use that. And then say so this, Serial data I've connected to port one and the clock to port two. And that's GP zero and GP one respectively. We just need to make sure that they're coded correctly in the code. And you could move them onto just about any pins, um, any of the GP pins on there. 
And then I've just added two more devices, these two push button switches. On mine, these are actually colored. So switch one on mine is colored red, which will be used for playing and pausing the stopwatch. And the second one on mine, it's colored white. I put a white cap on it and that will be used for as a reset pin. And I've just taken the next two GPIO ports. So this is pin four is GP2, which goes to switch one. And then the other side of that is connected to ground. And the same with the second switch, which is connected to pin five, which is uh, GP3. And then again, that goes back to ground. So these will have pull-ups enabled and they'll normally be high and when you press the button that'll take them down to ground and give you a low signal. And that's the extent of the wiring. There's nothing else needed and we can just move on to the coding. Before I do, I'll give you a quick demonstration that shows how this works and how these buttons work. So I'll just give a quick demonstration of it working and to just connect the power supply and we should see it start automatically. So it runs straight away and it says stopwatch and then says zero and basically it's a counter. Press the red button which is used to play and pause the counter, the stopwatch and you can see it counting up. And we can pause it again. We can pause it. We can play it. Pause it again. And now if we hit reset, it sets back to zero. And we can start it counting again. And you can also press the reset without stopping it first and it will just continue counting. So this is the stopwatch and this is what we're going to create using code using MicroPython. So to use the i squared c backpack LCD display in your code, then you need the library to run it with. And this is the particular one that I've used it's by T622, Tyler Pepe, although I think it's based on some other uh, other people's code initially, um, but this is the, the one I downloaded, RPI Pico I2C LCD. I'll include a link to this in the description. And essentially there's two files you need. This is the LCD API.py file and the Pico I2C LCD.py file. And basically you just need to download those and save them to the Pico. And you can do this by using Thony Editor. You can just open them in the Thony Editor and then just do save as and put them onto the Pico. So now we're going to switch to the Thony Editor and we can have a look at the code that we created. Uh, so it's got some imports at the top, time and machine and math. So that's basically going to be able to handle the time in. We need to import the pin for the buttons and the I2C library for I squared C. And then those two library files that we've downloaded and put on the Pico. Set the I squared C address. So by default on the particular backpack I've got, which is quite a common one, the address is decimal 39 or 0x27. Now if you wanted to control multiple ones of these or you wanted something else was already using that address, you can change that address with the board I've got by shorting together some pads that are on the back. And you can, you've, you've got three pads and that gives you uh, a variety of different addresses that you can change to if you need to do that. But that's the default. There is a different backpack board that has a different 
one as well. So if it doesn't work, then you might need to just Google the chip that's on your thing and find out the default I squared C address for that. Define the number of rows and columns, and this particular one's got two by 16. I've also got some bigger ones with four rows on, um, but the two, two by 16 is probably the most common. Uh, define the I squared C SDA and SCL pins, and these are from the point of view of the Pico. So I'm using port zero and port one. And the play pin and reset pins used for my buttons are defined there as well. Um, there's a few print statements here and these are just ones that I've put in for a bit of debugging while I've been creating these. These could be removed if you wanted. I create an I2C interface and just provide the pin numbers and the frequency. That's normally the frequency you'd use for I squared C. And then create an LCD entry using the I2C LCD library. I created my buttons using the pins and then there's a little bit of setup code. I've, this, is, this is partly just some debugging code that can be removed. Um, I, I did a clear and then hide the cursor so you don't get a blinking cursor. Um, set the timer to zero and running is tracking the status of this. Running is false, the time is paused, and running true, it's running. Again, I clear the screen and put the, the statement stopwatch on the top line. And now everything else happens in this while true loop. So I'm going to keep running forever while the code's running. First we check for the button being pressed. Now we're looking for a value of false, and this is because, remember I said, it connects from the pin down to zero. And when you press it, that's what gets connected. So it's normally high, normally true. When you press it, it changes to false. So whenever the button's pressed, we set running to not running. That's basically going to invert this running status. So if it's running, it's going to set it to not, which is false. If it's not running, then it's going to invert not running to set it to true. Quite a simple trick there. I do have an, another print status here that just allows me to do some debugging. And then I've got a, a sleep here. Now, there are ways of removing this. This is going to give a, a delay between pressing the button and the stopwatch starting. However, if you didn't have this in at all, whenever you press the play button, it's going to toggle really quickly between play and pause and when you remove it, you don't know whether it's actually started or not. So a simple but basic way of doing this is basically to, once you've pressed it, delay for half a second. So as long as you remove your button in that time, it'll take that action. It's not ideal. There's better ways of doing it, but they involve a lot more code. So I'm trying to keep it simple here just for this example. Similar sort of thing with the reset button. So when you press it, it goes false. There's a bit of debugging code and it just sets the time to zero. It then clears the screen and puts the stopwatch back on uh, just so that it takes effect immediately. And then it does this sleep of half a second, which is, as I said before, it's just to stop it constantly counting the reset button being pressed. The LCD move to moves to the second line. so column zero, row one, and then puts the value of the current timer. The timer, it's a floating point number. It's counted up in point 0.1 of a second, but I don't want to display the fractions. They're impossible to read anyway, because they flicker past too fast. So using math.floor just rounds that off to an integer value and converts it into a string, which the LCD display can display. And then if it's run in, it increases the timer. And it only does this by 0.1 of a second. So it needs 10 loops before you would have that value increase. If you put a one second delay in it, then it's 
it's going to take that long before it's able to register the press of any of the buttons. So that's why it's set at 0.1. And essentially that's the code. Uh, you can download this from my website. So all the details will be in the description and you can just download that and run. The one thing you might want to do is look at alternative ways of handling the um, button presses so they're not counting multiple times and they're not adding this delay. And you can do that by, for instance, you can have a separate timer that says, how long is it since I last pressed that button? And you just won't count it for that long. And that saves you having to actually use these sleeps to effectively pause the run of the program. So that's something else that'll leave you as a exercise if that's something you're interested in doing yourself. I hope you found that useful. Remember this is just a basic bit of code to get you started. You can develop this and you can use these LCD displays for so much other stuff and really with the help of this library it just really is quite straightforward to code. So I hope you found that useful and I'll be putting more videos on for other things about the Pico, about the Raspberry Pi. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And please give this video a thumbs up if it was useful so that other people get to see it as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on a future video.